Here is a sermon that was preached by Pastor Ballon in one of the Sunday morning services. And this morning, I would like to start a new series. You know, as we used to do a series of sermons, I would like to start a new series on Follow Me. And as I was waiting on the Lord to what to you know, share with you, what to start with, and the Lord gave me these words, Follow Me. Follow Me. The moment we receive, the moment we listen to this, we get uh, the, 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 the idea of Jesus calling his disciples to follow him. And I believe this morning God will speak to us and he's going to speak to us in the coming weeks too on the same topic. Just want to you know, quickly take you through the rationale behind this series. Why do we really talk about this topic of following God, follow me? You know, God wants us to follow him. All through the New Testament and the Old Testament, if we turn back, the, turn the pages and see, we see God instructing mankind to follow him. Even, in the, even when the children of Israel were in the wilderness, God's instruction was very clear. You follow me by obeying the leadership. As Moses was leading the children of Israel in the wilderness, God was asking them to follow because God was leading them, taking them in the wilderness. But of course, children of Israel, they were not willing to follow Lord God as he wanted them to follow. And that's the reason, you know, they had to wander in the wilderness for such a long time. God wants us to follow him. You know, that today if you look at the church and look at the community and society, there are many observers, but there are very few followers of Lord Jesus Christ. There are many believers. They are willing to believe God for a miracle, but there are very few are willing to follow Lord Jesus Christ. There are many fans for Lord Jesus Christ. Like we have fans for all the celebrities in the same way. There are many fans, there are, you know, they, they get so fascinated by listening and by seeing what Jesus can do today. There are many fans, but then there are only few followers of Lord Jesus Christ. There are many visitors. They visit often Jesus Christ. They just come and check with the Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, how you are you doing? Are you going, doing well? Is everything okay with you, Jesus? Okay, I come back maybe after two months, after three months, and then again check with you. There are many visitors, but then there are very few followers. There are many beneficiaries. Many people receive blessing from God, but they, they seek God only for blessing, but they are not willing to follow Lord Jesus Christ. God is not looking for observers. God is not looking for believers, just believers. God is not looking for fans. God is not looking for beneficiaries. God Almighty is looking for people who can follow Lord Jesus Christ. God is looking for followers of him. You know, only those who follow Jesus Christ on this earth can follow Lord Jesus Christ even when he takes us into the eternity. Only those who follow Lord Jesus Christ can follow him as we leave this world and enter into eternity. I don't think anybody who is not following, who is not known to Lord Jesus Christ can suddenly appear all of a sudden in heaven. So unless we follow Lord Jesus Christ today, how can we make others to follow God? You know, the idea of whole, the existence of church is not for themselves. The church is existing for the community. Church is existing for people who are unchurched. Church is existing for people who are not having church today. And if we do not, if we do not follow the Lord God, how do we make others to follow Christ? You know, these are the areas of, of, of my struggle and our struggle. And I, know I put all this together and I was thinking, it is very important that you and I need to follow Lord Jesus Christ. You know, that really helped me to get into this series of sermons called Follow Me. And I just want to take you to, to, through some of the profound and powerful words that Lord Jesus spoke when he was living on the face of this earth. If you remember a couple of those words that Lord, Lord Jesus spoke when Jesus was standing before the tomb of Lazarus, what did he say? He said, Lazarus, come forth. And what happened there? The dead Lazarus came out walking alive. When the sea was roaring, and the disciples were so afraid that they may die. And Jesus was sleeping at the boat. When Jesus' disciples went and woke him up, 
Jesus stood and he said, peace be still. Do you remember those words? Peace be still. And there was absolute silence, calm in the sea. Jesus was entering into the city of Jericho. And as he was walking in the city of Jericho, he came suddenly to a tree, a tree called sycamore tree, and he stopped. And he looked about. And he saw Zacchaeus was sitting on the treetop. And Jesus said, Zacchaeus, come down. And what happened? Zacchaeus came down. You know, some of the profound words, some of the very deep words are powerful words that Jesus spoke. And we see miracles happening there. They brought a paralyzed man into the presence of Lord Jesus. And that man was so paralyzed, he could not move. He could not get up. And Jesus looked at him and he said, your sins are forgiven and you arise and walk. And what happened? The paralyzed man, he got up and he started walking. One day after performing a miracle of, you know, feeding 5,000, Jesus, I guess, probably heard the news of John the Baptist beheaded. And Jesus wanted to spend some time with the Father. And he went to the mountain asking the disciples to cross the Sea of Galilee. And Jesus went to the mountaintop and he was praying. And disciples were caught up in the great storm in the sea. And they could not move further and they were so afraid that they may drown and they may die. And Jesus knowing that he walked on the sea and came to the boat. And when Peter and the disciples they saw, they were so afraid. And what Jesus said, it is I do not be afraid. And you know, that made Peter even to walk on the water. Because that gave such a great faith to Peter. And what happened when Jesus was hanging at the cross? When he was about to give his life to God, God the Father. He was about to breathe his last breath. He cried out with a loud voice, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani. And also he said, it is finished. And the moment he said, it is all done. Scripture says he gave up the spirit to the Father. You know, there are powerful words that Jesus spoke when he lived on the earth. Jesus, one day when he started his ministry, he was walking near the Sea of Galilee. And he saw two fishermen. They were just, you know, washing their nets. And they came after fishing and they were washing their nets. And he looked at them and he said, one word, follow me. He just looked at the men. He said, follow me. Scripture says, Peter and his brother Andrew, they just left their fishing. And they followed Lord Jesus Christ. And he walked and he did the same thing with this couple of tax collectors. And told them, follow me. You know, if you think about the word that Jesus spoke. Made the disciples to leave their profession and follow Lord Jesus Christ. There is something that is so significant in these two words, follow me. When Lord Jesus said, follow me, that meant so much for those disciples. And I believe Lord Jesus Christ is telling the same thing to you and me today. He's asking us to follow him. Let's, keep, let, let, let's look at who are these followers of Lord Jesus Christ. I believe followers are nothing, none other than the disciples of Lord Jesus Christ. Who are the disciples? But don't we, are we not disciples of Jesus Christ? You know, we are called to follow Lord Jesus Christ. We are called the disciples of Lord Jesus Christ. So every follower of Lord Jesus Christ is called the disciple of Lord Jesus Christ. You know, what does it mean really to say discipleship? Discipleship is to learn more about God. To learn and to commit to the leadership. Our leader is Lord Jesus Christ. As we commit our lives to Lord Jesus Christ, you know, we are disciples are the followers. They submit their lives and they obey to the master. You know, as we give our lives to God, as we obey to God, we are none other than the disciples of Lord Jesus Christ, our followers. The desire of any disciple is to mature like the master. The disciple of any follower, of any guru, or any, any, anyone, even they want to become like the leader or the, or the master. The you and I following Lord Jesus Christ, the reason is 
You know, one day we want to become like Lord Jesus Christ. We want to mature to a level that we become like Lord Jesus Christ. Our characters, our qualities, you know, our performance, our abilities, they all want to become like Lord Jesus Christ. Disciples also go wherever the master is asking them to go. Disciples will do whatever the master is asking them to do. They always stand alongside the master. You know, no matter what it takes, no matter how much it takes for them to follow and to obey and to commit their lives to Lord Jesus Christ. So you and I are the followers of Lord Jesus Christ. You know, today God is asking us to follow him. I don't think God is expecting us to follow him the way we believe we follow today. I'm sure God is expecting the way, I, God is not expecting me to follow the way I follow today. God is expecting us to follow him as scripture us is asking us to follow him. You know, that's what we are going to see in a couple of weeks now, from now. Just want to, want to take you to, to Matthew chapter 4. Matthew chapter 4 verses 18 to 20. Matthew chapter 4 verse 18. And Jesus walking by the sea of Galilee saw two brothers, Simon called Peter, and Andrew his brother, casting a net into the sea, for they were fishermen. Verse 19 says, Then he said to them, Follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. They immediately left their nets and followed him. You know, here we see a miracle taking place. As I said, Jesus was walking by the sea of Galilee, and Simon, Peter, and his brother Andrew, they were casting a net into the sea. Because they were fishermen. And when Jesus looked at them, Jesus said, follow me. And when Jesus said, follow me, and he said, I will make you fishers of men. And they immediately left their nets and followed him. You know, I was just thinking for a while. <coughs> Sorry, I was not sure whether Peter and Andrew, they knew who Lord Jesus Christ was. Probably they would have heard about Lord Jesus Christ. But probably they may be seeing him for the first time. And now when Jesus says, follow me, how come they are able to leave their profession and follow Lord Jesus Christ? It's not very easy to leave your job. And today, you know, morning, if we just tell Debbie, Debbie, just leave your job and come and follow HIPM in the ministry. Right? I'm sure Debbie will be willing to do it if there is an opportunity. But then she will think for a moment. She'll think about her husband. She'll think about her ch children. She will think about her family situation. She will be thinking about all the financial struggles and the financial commitments she has. And eventually when we put all this together, we will come to an easy decision of saying, not yes, of saying no. Right? That's easy. Because we know how much we are committed for. And I was thinking about Peter and Andrew. You know, they were fishermen. They were fishing not just for fun. You know, today we go for fishing just for fun, right? So they were not fishing for fun. That's their livelihood. You know, that's the bread and um, you know, butter they are just depending on. That's something they need to get. There is no other way. But then they decided, I leave everything and follow Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus walked a little further. In Matthew chapter 9, verse 9 says, And as Jesus passed on from there, he saw a man named Matthew sitting at the tax office. And he said to him, follow me. So he arose and followed him. You know, that is so amazing when we think about it. Tax collectors, are not, they are highly regarded on that day because, you know, they, they are very wealthy people, tax collectors, right? So M Matthew is sitting in his office, in his tax office, and Jesus goes there, and he walks closer to him and said, Matthew, follow me. And scripture says, he arose and followed him immediately. He went further in Mark chapter 2, verse 14. As he passed by, he saw Levi, the son of Alphaeus, sitting at the tax office, and he said to him, follow me. So he arose and followed him. You know, when Jesus said, follow me, people who are so caught up in their professions, they were just willing to leave their professions and they were willing to follow Lord Jesus Christ. I believe follow me is the call of God in every one of our lives. It always not necessary that we need to leave our professions to follow Lord God, but we are asked to follow God in whatever situation that we are in today. 
whatever commitments that we are living with today, God is expecting each and every one of us to follow him. Follow him, follow me is the call of God in our lives. You know, God is calling us for a purpose. God called his disciples for a purpose. That's what scripture says. Matthew 4, 19 as we read. Then he said to them, follow me and I will make you fishers of men. What does it mean to say fishers of men? It looks so strange. How can we fish men? Fishers of men. You know, Jesus was telling them that I have a purpose in your life. I have a plan for your future. It's not necessary, it's, it's, it's not enough that only you experience Jesus Christ. It's not enough that only you receive the blessing from God. It is also important that you need to tell others about Lord God. It is also important that you need to tell someone else that there is Lord Jesus Christ who loves you. You can come to him and he will meet all your needs. You know, I, I really thank God for Germany one day spoke to Ravin about Lord Jesus Christ and he invited Ravin to his presence. And you know what? God blessed him. God blessed him. You know, that's what God expects us to do in our lives too. God called Peter and Andrew and Matthew and Levi and all the disciples and, tell, and told them, you have been fishing for nothing. You have been fishing for your life on this earth, but I will make you fisher of men so that you can bring life into eternity. You know, when Jesus calls us into this, that what we are in today, he had a purpose of calling us into what we are in today. John chapter 12, verse 26 says, John 12, 26. If anyone serves me, Jesus said, if anyone serves me, let him follow me. And where I am, there my servant will also. If anyone serves me, him my father will honor. God also calls us to follow him, to serve him. To serve him. Not only to tell, about, tell others about Jesus Christ and also to serve him. You know, what does it mean to serve God? To sing praises to God. To worship God. To pray in his presence. To share the word of God. To invite others who are living in darkness into this life. Into this light. God also calls us to serve him. The calling of God comes in our lives in the form of God telling us, asking us to follow him. And he calls us to, so that he can equip us and he can use us to bless somebody else. To bless someone else. Following God also involves a certain amount of sacrifice from our end. In Matthew chapter 8, verse 22, there are a couple of disciples they were following Lord Jesus Christ. But at some point of time, a disciple came to Lord Jesus and said, Lord Jesus, my father just died. I need to go and bury my father. And you know what Jesus said? He looked at him and he said, Follow me and let the dead bury their own dead. Discipleship, following Lord Jesus Christ, comes with a cost. There is a pay that we need to pay in order to follow Lord Jesus Christ. Now, I just want to make that verse a little easy for you, saying that when we follow Lord Jesus Christ, our priorities get changed. Our priorities get altered. It's not that God is not asking us to, not to take care of your family members, not to take care of your dad, no. When we come to Jesus Christ, when we decide to follow Lord God, our priorities get changed. Some of those priorities in our lives, they are at the topmost but when we commit our life to God, life to Jesus Christ, when we decided to, Lord, for, to follow Lord Jesus Christ, those priorities become of low importance. There are something else which are coming up. They are those priorities with which they are the purpose for the call of God in our lives. I'm sure all of you would experience that in your life. Otherwise, you know, we are not here this morning. Why we are here this morning? Our priorities got changed. Otherwise, we would like to maybe just relax on Sunday morning at home. Otherwise, you know, just go and watch football or something else. Why we are here? Because our priorities got changed. In the moment we decide to follow Lord Jesus Christ, without knowing or unknowingly, knowingly or unknowingly, with our interest or, you know, without even our control, our priorities get altered. 
here we see a disciple who wanted to go and bury his dad. And Jesus said, let the dead bury. You are called to walk in life. You are not allowed to. You are not called to be among the dead. You are called to walk in life. And Jesus is telling them. And following Lord Jesus Christ, we are also expected to take challenges in our lives. Matthew 10, 38. Jesus looked at the disciples and said in Matthew 10, 38. And he who does not take his cross and follow after me is not worthy of me. I'd like to read the other scripture together. Matthew 16, 24. Then Jesus said to his disciples, If anyone desire to come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. As we are talking about following Lord Jesus Christ comes with a cost. Comes with a cost. The work that Jesus performed at the cross is helping us to receive salvation for free of cost. We don't pay anything for the salvation because we can't pay for the salvation, for us to receive salvation, Jesus paid his own life as a sacrifice at the cross. At the cross. But for us to take this precious salvation and to go and give that to someone else who has not received Lord Jesus Christ, who is not, who is totally new to Lord Jesus, maybe never heard about Lord Jesus Christ, that we need to pay a price for that. Salvation is free. But to take this salvation and introduce someone to Christ Jesus, there is a payment that needs to be paid. And God expects you and me to pay that. That's the reason Jesus is telling the disciples, and he who does not take his cross and follow after me is not worthy of me. Means he is not worthy to follow me. He cannot follow me. He cannot be my disciple if he's not willing to pay that price. You know, each and every one of us is called to pay that price in our lives. For some of us, maybe we are not able to give our time to our family, maybe. We are not able to enjoy with our parents or with our children the way they expect us to spend our times with them. But unfortunately, we are not able to do it because our priorities got altered and God is expecting us to pay the price so that we can serve God. We can be faithful for our calling in our lives. But the kind of trouble that we go through day to day life. God expects us to go through it. And if we are not willing to go for it, God cannot really do anything with us. With us, God wants us to be used in his kingdom. And there is a price. We need to get up early in the morning at 6 o'clock or 5 o'clock, whatever time. You need to do it. Why? Because if you don't do it, you cannot be a true disciple because you are expected to spend your time at the presence of God, at the feet of God. So you need to sacrifice your sleep. We need to sacrifice our comfort at times. People who are serving God in the jungles, those who are serving God as a missionaries, you know, <coughs> they decided to leave everything for the sake of God. And they are willing to pay that price. The more we are willing to pay, the more God can use us. The more we are available for God, God can use us more. Following God involves a sacrifice. I'm just giving you a kind of introduction as we you know before we really get into this topic in the coming weeks. Following God also involves listening to the voice of God. You know, at times we tend to think that, am I following God just blindly? No, we are not following God blindly. Am I just following God? Maybe someone told us, or I just got inspired by listening to a testimony. No, we cannot just follow God just, just, just for an instant inspiration. It is a deep commitment from our hearts. It is a deep commitment that we make to follow Lord God. We are not just following just, just by blind, blind faith. Scripture says we follow him by listening to God. John chapter 10 verse 27 scripture says. John 10 27. My sheep, Jesus said. My sheep hear my voice. And I know them. And they follow me. Can we read that together? My sheep hear my voice. And I know them. And they follow me. Me, what does it mean? Jesus is telling my sheep, he is referring to the disciples and to the followers, and he says, My sheep, hear my voice. Think of a shepherd and a sheep. I don't know, there is a you know, there, there was a video in, in Facebook someone shared. A shepherd, you know, they try a bunch of sheep 
with the different shepherds, right? So they are all just there having their uh, you know good time. All the sheep are together. Then uh, who, somebody who is not a real shepherd, he will come and call the sheep. He will scream from the other end. Do you think the sheep will respond? They don't even mind. They will just do their business. They don't even care about who calls. And they try with various different people. And finally, they bring the real shepherd. And he just make a small voice. And the moment they heard that voice, they all turned. And they came running to the shepherd. Jesus said, my sheep hear my voice. The question that I want to ask the church this morning is, do we hear his voice? If we are not listening to God, there are chances that we can listen to many other voices around us. Because there are many other voices which can take us, us astray from God. We can, which can take us away from God. There are many voices that we hear today. It is very important that a follower of Lord Jesus Christ has to listen from Lord God. Because Jesus said, my sheep listen to me, hear my voice, and they follow me. So we cannot follow Lord Jesus Christ without listening to him. I'm not saying that you need to hear the audible voice of God, but you can hear the very soft, gentle voice of God in your mind. As you read the scripture, you can listen to God speaking to you. You know, if God is not doing it, if it is not happening to you, I'm 100% sure there is something wrong in your spiritual life. If you are not able to listen to God, maybe when you kneel down and pray, if God is not putting thoughts in your mind, God is not impressing with what you want to do in your life, and when you open up the scripture and you are not able to receive anything from God, 100% which I'm sure there is something wrong in your spiritual life and you need to set that right. I need to set that right. It is important that his sheep listen to God. You know, we are not following some God who cannot speak, who cannot move. We are following a God who is alive. Amen? This morning, how many of you believe with me? Amen? Hallelujah. We believe in a God who speaks to us. Who speaks to us. And we need to have an ear to hear his voice. My sheep, listen to my voice. His followers, listen to the voice of the Holy Spirit. God is, Jesus is also telling in John chapter 8 verse 12. He spoke to them again saying, I am the light of the world. Just listen to this. I am the light of the world. He who follows me shall not walk in darkness, but have the light of life. I am the light of the world. He who follows me shall not walk in darkness. Following God is also means walking in light. Walking in light. What does it mean walking in light? Walking in light simply means walking according to the desire of God. Walking according to the word of God. Not giving room to the darkness of the world to enter into our lives. Walking in light. So that we can shine forth light to others. Finally, following Lord Jesus Christ simply means imitating Lord Jesus. That's what Paul writes in 1 Corinthians 11, 1. 1 Corinthians 11, 1, he says, Paul is in fact saying, you imitate me. He says, you follow me as I follow Lord Jesus Christ. Paul is saying here, you imitate me, just I also imitate Christ. You know, if you are a true follower of Lord Jesus Christ, people should be able to see Christ in our lives. You know, today it's so sad that people are seeing not Christ in, among Christians. People are not able to see Jesus among Christians, but people are able to see all the characteristics of darkness of this world among Christians. You know, one of the reasons why today people are not coming to Lord Jesus Christ is just because of Christianity, the religion. People are not able to see Jesus Christ in our lives. The moment they see Jesus Christ in our lives, they don't want anything else. They will follow Lord Jesus Christ. You know, some of, uh, some of the you know, great scholars or great leaders, they say, they are not Christians, but they say, I like Jesus. I like his teachings. But I hate Christianity. The reason why they say I hate Christianity, they don't see Christ in Christ, among Christians. You know, today that's what the world is expecting to see in our lives. We, it is very important that it is time that we need to follow Lord Jesus Christ. When we imitate Lord Jesus Christ, this is, these are the couple of things that I have listed that they will see in our lives. Number one, his humility. People around us will see his humility 
in our lives. The humbleness. They are Christians. I just I don't want to use that word Christians. They are just followers of Lord Jesus Christ because I see they are so humble. They are so loving. They are so caring. They are so humble people. I love them. Secondly, they will see the tenderness and compassion of Lord Jesus Christ in our lives. Characteristics of Lord Jesus is seen in the follower of Lord Jesus Christ. His tenderness, his compassion. At the same time, they will also fail not to see his boldness and his courage. You know, with the boldness, such a boldness, Jesus preached the word of God. With such a boldness, he was speaking, you know, with the Roman authorities. The boldness and courage will be seen among Christians. Today, Christianity is considered as a timid and fearful <coughs> group of people, bunch of people. They are so afraid. The moment they heard the word persecution, they stop even coming to church. We need to see Jesus in our lives. That means People around us should see the boldness and courage in our lives. Jesus also was determined and he had a purpose. You know, today the follower of Lord Jesus Christ, his life must be so determined. And it has to have a purpose. It has to have a purpose. The characteristics of Lord Jesus Christ. The passion and zeal that Jesus had for his father. You know, in the moment he thinks about his father, we can see the passion coming into his life. You know, his blood, blood vessels are you know, becoming active and blood flowing through in his life. The moment he thinks about his father, he was so passionate about his father. God expects, the world expects us to have such a passion for Lord Jesus Christ. Of course, the holiness and righteousness need to be seen among Christians today. Those who follow Lord Jesus Christ. You know, I, become, I think it's a challenge to you and me this morning. That the, the question is, am I following Lord Jesus Christ? God willing, in a couple of weeks, and as we go further, just want to you know, take you, us through these topics. Are we following him faithfully? Are we following Lord Jesus Christ willingly? Are we following Lord Jesus Christ sacrificially? How we follow Lord God? Are we following Lord God closely, sincerely, meticulously? How are we following Lord God? Are we following him by faith? Are we following God in total surrender? Are we following God in total obedience? How to follow him fully? Scripture talks about in many places following God fully. Such and such a person followed God fully, totally committed. And also how do we follow God expectantly? You know, I believe God will take us into the spiritual depths of these scriptures as we take this down. Also, God will make things easy for any of us to understand these thoughts as we take this further. This morning. I would like to close just only with one question. Are we following Lord Jesus Christ? Hope you are blessed by this teaching. Please write to Pastor Balan Swami Nathan at balan at hipm.org. God bless you.